Shalom, and welcome to the weekend edition of the Daily Dose of Hebrew. We're getting toward the end of Jeremiah chapter 4, looking today at verse 29. We're still in the context of uh, Jeremiah describing the destruction that the Lord is sending as a, uh, as a punishment, as a chastening against his people. And here we're going to see the response of the, the inhabitants of the city with the terror that's coming upon them. Let's read the text in Hebrew as we get started. Mikol parash velo me keshet borachat kol hair ba'u be'avim uva kefim alu kol hair azuva ve'en yoshev bechin ish. Well, we start with mikol, which is our preposition min. Good old preposition mean here, and the nuns assimilated into the kof here. So from the voice, or from a voice or sound of, and this is in construct state with the following word, parash. Parash, which means a horseman. Uh, and then with the preposi- uh, prep- a conjunction here, in rome, obviously we have a participle. This is a masculine singular cal par- participle from Rama, which means, uh, properly speaking, it means to throw. But when it's found with keshet, which means the bow, like an archer's bow, uh, rumi keshet, to throw the bow, means that this is, the t- this is an expression for an archer or a bowman. So we have a horseman over here and a bowman over here. And from the sound of uh, the horseman and the bowman, now these may be taken obviously in a collective sense, not just one horseman who's out there and one archer, uh, but, but uh, the whole military force that's coming against. So, uh, so with this sound being heard, uh, all the city, or it's possible to read this as well as every city, um, Borahat. Now, what do we have here? We see this little oval. This is going to be a participle. It's going to be a feminine singular participle. You see this at ending here. And it's a cow from uh, the verb barak, which means to, to flee away. So from because, because of the sound of the, uh, um, the horseman and the bowman, every city uh, or all the city flees away, and uh, with the participle underlining the continuous action here. Uh, they came, or they entered, now this is a perfect, third common plural, cal, from a good old, good old verb, ba, or bo, and so even though it's a perfect, uh, we could translate it as a present. It's continuing this present idea of the participle. Again, this is something Jeremiah is seeing in a vision as well. So they, they entered, what did they enter? Into the, uh, well, usually this word av is related to cloud, uh, but it can also be used for like bushes or um, a shrubbery along the side of a river, something like that uh, uh, as well. So it's, it's, it's the thickets along the sides of a river because it has that same form as a cloud would have up above. So it's, it's that idea of a, that kind of a shape. So into the thickets, obviously they didn't enter the clouds, but into the thickets. And into, now kafim, um, kaf is a word, it's only found twice here and then in the book of Job as well, and it means rocks. And with the verb Allah, this, this also is a perfect third common plural. It's a cow from our verb Allah, to go up. So um, they, they, they went up into the rocks. Uh, and oftentimes with, uh, with the idea of rocks well, and going up, we, we, we might want to translate, translate this as climb. So they climbed upon the rocks. All the city, Azuva. So what do we have here? Well, this also is a participle, but it's a passive participle. You see the shurik that's right there between the second and third consonant. So it's a passive. And with this a ending on it, it's a feminine singular. And it's cow from our verb azav, which means to abandon. So the passive is to be abandoned. So all the city or every city uh, is abandoned. And there, because the people have fled away, obviously, and there is not, so there's our particle of non-existence. Yoshev, this is just a participle, um, masculine singular participle, cal from yashav, meaning to sit or to dwell. But here it's not so much uh, being used in a substantive way, the dweller, because we actually have the individual over here, uh, a man. This is actually keeping more of the verbal idea. There is not a dwelling, uh, a man is not dwelling in and then hain is the suffix, but it's a third feminine plural suffix in them, 
which is why uh, sometimes we're not sure whether we should translate the ear as all the, uh, the whole city or, or every city, because we could, tr could translate this as every city. So it might not just be Jerusalem, but it might be the, the smaller villages and towns around Jerusalem uh, that are panicking because of the, uh, the approaching enemy. Uh, so there's no inhabitant in them. Uh, so that's, that's why we get this uh, plural idea. It might be more than just the city of Jerusalem itself. And you'll see differences in the translations because of that. Well, let's go ahead and hide our work here, squeeze our text down, and uh, look at a couple of uh, translations. First of all, the, uh, the Tanakh, which is the Jewish Publication Society, I think it's their 1985 edition, at the shout, or the sound, or the voice of horsemen and bowmen. So they've kept a singular, but obviously in the context, singular collective here. The whole city flees. So they have this as the whole city of Jerusalem flees, okay? They enter the thickets, okay, good for Av, Avim here. They clamber up the rocks, that's good for going up into the rocks, they clamber up the rocks. The whole city is deserted, so again they're taking this as the whole city, and not every city um, is deserted. Not a man remains there, there's not remaining in there. Uh, they didn't develop the, the plural idea of the, the feminine uh, suffix here. Uh, they're, they're keeping that in relationship to the one city of Jerusalem. A uh, little bit different with the uh, NIV, at the sound of horsemen and archers. So there you see a plural collective, which is perfectly proper here for these these words. Every town, so they're, they're taking you in a slightly different way. It's not just the whole city, but every town. So Jerusalem and probably the surrounding one, uh, towns and villages as well, takes to flight. Some go into the thickets, some climb up among the rocks. Well, you can say, well, wait a minute, how do you get the some idea? There's no partitive sense up here. But uh, I think that's just a logical uh, interpretation of, of, the, of the NIV translators, because if some are going into the thickets, then they're not going up on the rocks, and those that are going up on the rocks are not going into the thickets, because uh, I don't think you can really combine the two too easily. So that's just a logical inference, not, but not a, a direct translation with the some and some. But it, I think it's valid. All the towns, so here they're taking uh, each town or every town uh, and not the all the town. But I, I think that's a valid interpretation as well, especially in the light of the suffix down here. All the towns are deserted. Uh, every town is deserted. No one lives in them because the them here seems to be um, ruling the way that they're going to translate this up here. Either way, it's very clear what's happening. The Lord's uh, destruction, uh, his chastening rod is coming against his people, uh, and the people are fleeing the cities, they're fleeing the towns, they're heading to the mountains, they're seeking to hide and protect themselves. But uh, God's judgment uh, is coming upon them. A rather sober verse. We'll check back with us soon as we continue working uh, toward the end of chapter 4 in our weekend edition of the Daily Dose of Hebrew. Shalom.